Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to discuss and show you how to replace your team's internal email with Asana. This is how I've been managing my team for the last few years, ever since I sort of grew from being a solo consultant to running a team like I do today. From day one, I decided, you know, being the Asana expert, we're gonna use Asana, we're not gonna use email for our communication. Of course, we still do use email for communicating with clients, we can't get away from that, but at least internally amongst ourselves when we're discussing work and following up about different projects and tasks that we're doing, all of that goes through Asana. And we really like this because we have less email to deal with on a daily basis. I mean, the communication is still happening, it's just happening in a different tool, but we prefer that our internal conversations happen in Asana because that's ultimately where our work lives. It's where we can see the status of our projects and who's doing what. And so it means when we sit down to work on a task or a project, I can click on a task and I can see the conversation that's taking place right in front of me. I don't need to go switching to my email to go and find that conversation. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help with setting up your Asana account, learning how to get more out of this tool, or training your team on the best practices like this, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. So. Here are some tips to help you replace more of your internal email with Asana. And it starts by setting expectations properly. What I mean by that is when you bring somebody into your team or if you're transitioning your team over to Asana, you have to start by actually conveying to your team that, hey, we expect all internal communication to happen inside Asana going forwards. Here are the conventions about when to use Asana and when we use email. And if you use tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams, when to use those tools as well. If you don't lay out the conventions or best practices, what you're gonna find is people on your team are gonna do their own thing. Some people are gonna prefer email because that's what they like and they're comfortable with. Some people are gonna use Asana and you're gonna spread conversations out. So you have to set expectations properly. And this might sound obvious, but most of the clients that we work with haven't done this. So you need to clearly communicate and convey to your team what the expectation is and that, yeah, we're gonna make this change. We're changing our culture and as a team, we all need to agree that this is how we're gonna communicate going forwards. This sounds obvious, but most of the clients that come to us for help haven't done this and that's why they're struggling with adoption and getting the team to use Asana properly. Now, when you're ready to actually start a conversation or follow up on a conversation, the nice thing about communicating in Asana is that it forces you to think about what is the project or task that I'm talking about. And so it puts your mind into a very sort of task and work centric way of thinking. Instead of just sending an email, you have to think about what is the project or action that we're working on. So here I am inside my Asana inbox. The inbox is where you get notified about updates to tasks that you are collaborating on. So this could be tasks being assigned to you, tasks being completed, or in this case, if I click on this notification here, I can see this task that Warwick is working on, and I can see this comment down here that Warwick has shared with me. He's sharing this, this update about the next steps. And so instead of Warwick emailing me, I can see it right here inside the task that he's already working on. And now if I want to follow up, because I can see this was six days ago, I can say, hey, at Warwick, How's this going? So I can respond there right inside the task. Instead of having the task open here in Asana and having to go and find an email conversation, we can do all, everything all in one place. Now, sometimes I might have something to say and there isn't an existing task that I can comment on. And so this is, like I was saying, the nice thing about Asana is it kind of forces you to think about, well, what is the action that needs to take place? So what I can do is I could quickly create a new task and say investigate Zapier issue, and maybe I'm gonna assign this to uh, Warwick. I could put this in a project if I want, so let's put it into business, and I'll choose my section there, and I'll type my message. So here I have something to say, there was an error, can you please take a look? Rather than sending an email, I'm gonna send this task through Asana, and I'm using the task as a vehicle to send the message. So instead of just sending a message, I'm actually giving Warwick a task with something to do. And so this is gonna go on his task list. Here's the task. He's got the message from me. And I've said we need, this, we need to do this by Wednesday. 
So I think this is just a more productive, effective way of working because instead of him just getting an email and having to then remember to do that and create his own task, Warwick just gets a task from me and my message is there ready to go. Now sometimes you might have something to say or something to share and there's no existing task that you can comment on and maybe there's not even an action in, and so creating a new task isn't really relevant. In that case, you can just simply send a message through Asana. I can do that by clicking the plus button up here and starting a new message where I can put in my subject and my recipients and I can type my message down here. And here's an example of that. So you can see, I just wanted to share uh, an update about Pipedrive's automation. I put this link in here, and this was shared with Lindsay and Warwick on my team. And so I chose to just send a message because there was no action that needed to take place. I didn't need anyone to do anything. I just simply wanted to share this. And so I've done that by just composing a message. You can also post messages inside projects. Each project, for example, this new product launch has a messages tab. And so I would use this area to compose a message where the message itself is related to the project, but there isn't really a task that I can comment on. You know, the, the update or what I have to share isn't really specific to any one of these tasks, but it is relevant to the project as a whole. So I can do that on the messages area here. I can uh, post my project update. I can type my message and you can see it's getting, no it's getting shared with the project members down here. And so those are a few other ways that I can communicate in Asana without necessarily having to comment on a task or create a new task. Now, if you are going to make this switch from email to using Asana more for your internal communication, it really does require everyone on the team that's using Asana to be checking their inbox multiple times a day. As I said before, this inbox is where you get notified about updates to tasks, including those important comments. So number one, the team has to be checking this multiple times a day. I do recommend going to your notifications and turning off email notifications for activity updates, mentions, daily summaries, and weekly reports. So I've got all of those turned off because remember the goal is we're trying to reduce and replace email. So I don't need Asana sending me emails about all these things because I'm checking my inbox each day. The other key best practice here is once I've dealt with a notification and I've responded to it, I've taken the necessary action, I can click this little archive button here to archive the notification. That clears the notification out of my inbox. And so when I get to inbox zero like this, I know that I'm up to date with all of my notifications and updates. That way when anything new comes in, I can see it's new and I, it's not getting mixed in with all of the old stuff. From my inbox, I can also create follow-up tasks if I want to set a reminder to myself to follow up on this later. I can also mark this as unread. I can bookmark it and I can go to my bookmarks up here to look at those saved notifications. And probably the most useful thing you can do with a notification is you can like a comment. And so this is really useful because it tells the other person, Warwick in this case, that I've seen your comment and I'm happy, happy with it. I don't need to send an email back. I can just click that like button. Warwick then gets notified that I've liked his comment and he knows that I've seen it. Now, of course, getting your team to change their behavior and adapt to a new tool, a new way of working, and to break old habits, especially using email, which we've been using for years and years, is a transition that's going to take some time. If you need help transitioning your team over to Asana successfully, click the link in the description below to learn more about our consulting options. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.